Welcome to Chat with Leaders. Our mission is to give resilient servant leaders a platform for sharing the inspiring things they're doing to lead their teams, customers, and themselves wisely. I'm Jeff Bond, Director of Client Services at AppBerry, and today's host, I'm proud to welcome Kevin Paul Scott, co-founder of Addo, author, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and just an all-around great guy to the show today. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, Jeff. It's exciting to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. And that's an awesome bookshelf you have there. They say leaders are readers, and, uh, and I know that you're passionate about leadership, so no surprise that you're uh, loaded up there with excellent material. Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, I, a lot of them I think I've read. There's probably a few I haven't. Some of them are up there to make me look smart. And the point of this show is to give our guests, you, uh, the platform to share what's inspiring your leadership, any specific challenges you're working to overcome, and how some of the principles you're putting into practice to lead faithfully and experience success in this current time. So let me just jump right in. The other day we were talking and you asked me the question, why is there this false narrative that servant leaders have to be soft? I thought that was a great question because I do think that that's often kind of the uh, perception of what servant leadership means is being passive and soft. Talk to me a little bit more about why that false narrative exists and, and how you would respond to that. Yeah. You know, I think all of us uh, that are believers in servant leadership, we want to be a part of something where we view our, our position and our platform as an opportunity to help to, to steward well the people that we are leading, to serve them. And I think that's a great thing. A lot of times what it looks like is, you know, when you think of how you lead, there's really persuasion, there's coercion, and there's manipulation. And on the surface, we'd say, we're all going to be persuaders. We don't want to manipulate. We don't want to coerce. I certainly don't want to manipulate, but let me give you an example. If we're really going to be servant leaders, and Jeff, right now you're in a building, and the, uh, uh, the fire alarm goes off, the smoke is rising, the building is burning down, that's not the time to persuade people to move out of the building. If you are a true servant leader, you're going to coerce them. You're going to say, no, this... I, you may not want to do this, but it's best for you. And because it's in your best interest, I'm going to move you to do that. And I think just too often, and I've been guilty of this, feeling like all servant leadership has to be democratic in nature. It's by popular opinion. It's making sure everybody feels good. Sometimes what's in people's best interest is not what makes them feel good, but it's what has to be done. And I think a, the best servant leaders they do what's in the best interest of the people they're leading, whether the people are excited about it or not. And sometimes the way in which you communicate that can really make a difference too. If you're being radically candid with somebody and, and sometimes it's feedback or, or leadership that you don't necessarily want to hear and it's hard, sometimes just prefacing it with, hey, I'm doing this from a place of love and caring and you know, and, and really resonating with people because sometimes the unsolicited feedback or the leadership that you just don't really understand why those decisions are being made, it's, it kind of boils down to communication a lot of the time. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah, completely. I think, you know, when you look out at the landscape and if you're really trying to make a difference in the world, if you're trying to lead people well, if you're trying to serve your customers well, sometimes as servant leaders, we can be soft in saying, well, I don't want to hurt my employees' feelings. I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. But if they're not doing what they've got to do, you're not doing them justice. I love, I, I never heard this before. I heard it a couple of weeks ago, this Winston Churchill quote that I think was awesome. He said, um, sometimes it's not enough to do what's best. We have to do what's required. And I was like, wow, that because so often it's like, well, they're really doing their best. Well, no. Sometimes we've got to do what's required, and that may mean pushing some people. And by the way, I'm not telling you that I'm good at this all the time. I, the reason that this, this tension is in my mind right now is because I think as a servant leader, I, I default to wanting to be on the softer side of things. And in most situations, that's good. But sometimes a real servant leader has got to make some tough decisions, have the hard conversations, because it's what's best in the end result. I couldn't agree more. And I'm not always good at it either. I've certainly felt that tension and, and succumbed to it and been soft in some ways in my past and leadership. And, uh, but it is a great lesson learned. Uh, and you make some great points there. And I've recorded over 20 episodes with my co hosts of this show. And that's probably the second or third time Winston Churchill has come up as a theme. So he has some great quotes, obviously, and inspiration that we ought to share. Uh, 
we talked a little bit about core values the other day and, and Chick-fil-A is such a great example of that. The leadership program that you guys put into place, simple principles of being kind and saying my pleasure and thank you and smiling at people has, of course, you can just drive to any Chick-fil-A and see the line around the building just to see how successful that's been comparatively to other uh, competitors. Uh, but we talked a little bit about uh, communicating some of those timeless truths of those types of values, but also considering the audience. It doesn't always apply. We all have different sets of values. So the Chick-fil-A model may not apply in like different neighborhoods or inner cities because just the values alignment. So in what ways have you kind of had to consider pivoting and making those, you know, those principles relevant to the audiences that you're teaching them to? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think, uh, so there's a theologian named N.T. Wright that says we learn best through contrast. So let me create a contrast for you here. I think most leaders are told they have to choose between one of two things. Either I can be true to my, my values, especially if those values are more uh, traditional or longstanding, more conservative values. I'm not talking politically here, but I can either be true to my values or I can be relevant. And, and you got to choose between one, like you, only one. You can't do both. And I think that is a false choice we've been confronted with. And it really was the problem that we set out to help Chick-fil-A solve in a world where they said in changing times, we're going to hold to some unchanging principles. Yet what was when we started working with them, a more regional brand that's now really doing well in, in, in New York and inner city Chicago and in the Midwest and now soon to be much more internationally, what we have to figure out how to do is take those timeless truths that haven't changed and communicate them in a relevant way. And I think for us to do that, we have to redefine relevancy. Relevancy is not about chasing trends. It's about standing the test of time. So it's not always being maybe the most current, but it's about having something that's going to be true today and five years from now and 10 years from now. I have to be honest with you, Jeff, the older I've gotten, the tougher that has been for me um, and for our team. But if you can figure that out, I think it is a secret sauce to not only get customers, but to keep employees of any generation engaged. I think a lot of it has to do with consistency too. Relevancy is a tough battle to fight because there's we're in this age of wanting to be authentic and different and and so many people are trying to find that authenticity through uh, outside of the bounds of any sort of faith bounding or any sort of core set of principles. And so, uh, you know, resisting that urge to seek that relevancy, but also sticking to the core of what you believe in, those shared beliefs and values and, and being consistent in them. And that's what Chick-fil-A has done. And regardless of values alignment or not, you have to look at their business success and say, hey, that works, you know, so maybe I should consider it. Uh, so it's great that you guys have stayed consistent. As an individual per unit, about twice as much as their next closest competitor. So right, right. Yeah, it's just in staggering. One a week. I know, I know. And that's great. Uh, you know what I also love about you, Kevin, is you really just pour into your uh, passion of, of leadership and I've read some of your recent blog posts, the power of long-term thinking, doing what's required, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, concise communication. Uh, you've had about 10 or more since March, since the pandemic started. Uh, and today is, we're, we're talking April, end of April into May. So you have not just sat on your hands and not done anything. You've really poured into your craft and served others in a way that's meaningful with this good, helpful content. Talk to me a little about your inspiration and, what kind of gets you out of bed and excited about leadership every day? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of leadership out there. One of the ones I like the best is John Maxwell's, which he says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. I think he's almost there. I, I do think it is influence. I would say there is one more piece of it, though. We define leadership at Addo as influence that leads to action. So the influence is important, but then you've got to have somebody actually do something. And for me, we want to have in our organization with the customers we serve, with our clients and with our employees, a bias toward action. And so, yeah, I think there's times when the world shuts down and you kind of uh, think about things differently. But what I admire about you, Jeff, and your team at Chat with Leaders is you've taken an opportunity and said, we're going to use this to grow. And I think the best leaders 
are, are have that bias towards action and they want to create something that's going to move the world forward. Well, thank you for the kind words and the affirmation. I felt the same way about you, Kevin, and I've been looking forward to this chat uh, so that we could really dive into that. And I look forward to, to further conversations. We're going to close the show out just to be a good steward of our listeners time. Uh, but close out with a call to action. What would you say to leaders right now uh, in terms of the actions that they're taking to help navigate a, a really uncertain time that we're in? Yeah, I think right now in an uncertain time, it's all about perspective. How do you, how do you see things differently? This gives us a chance to look at things in a different way that may be zooming out or kind of focusing in on an area. But perspective is the most important thing because the way you view things changes how you do things. And our, we may go back to work and our employees are the same, our team is the same, our customer is the same, the P&L is the same. But if we can go back into our situations with a new perspective, it'll change what we do. And if it changes what we do, we can get radically different results. So I think this is a time, yeah, podcasts like this, books, it's all about changing our perspective. I think perspective is a big word. And I've talked to so many people that are gaining new perspective. Sometimes it takes a crisis or adversity to get to that point of reflection, but it's certainly uh, something to be in an odd way thankful for. So, and I'm very thankful for you being on the show, Kevin. If people wanted to learn more about you or Addo, how would they get in touch? Yeah, probably the easiest way is just my website. It's kevinpaulscott.com. There's a link to Addo there as well. Uh, if they need uh, leadership opportunities for their their organization. Addo is a great place. Um, I have a few books out they can find at Addo uh, or definitely follow me on social media. It's, everything is Kevin Paul Scott. I don't go by all three names in real life, but Kevin Scott was far too common. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Kevin Paul Scott. Love it. Highly recommend it to the audience. I'll close out now and say uh, visit us on chatwithleaders.com. We'll be posting uh, this show and all the notes and a little bit more about you, Kevin, and your website there so that people can link up. Uh, we'll also post that out through our social media handles. Uh, you can email myself, Tim, or Chris, my co-host, at info at chatwithleaders.com if you have any suggestions on how we can improve and, and add more value to the show. Kevin, thanks again for your remarkable leadership and your gift of time. Thanks for having me, Jeff.